Right, so this was a requested video to explain my heating system as it works using solar power and a wood burner. Both have little specialties that you don't normally get if you buy a commercial system. Okay, so I made this heating system before I started recording for YouTube, so a lot of it's going to be old photos and stuff like that, but not that old. This system's been running for about six years now, and there's some things I'd definitely change about it, but on the whole it works pretty well. As the whole system spread over the whole house, I'm going to draw a diagram, and then as I draw elements of the diagram, I'll introduce the footage and show you what those bits actually look like. So we're going to start with the rocket stove, and we're going to draw this little thing here, and then we'll have a look at that. Also I'm going to cover all the elements in a relatively shallow amount of depth, sort of basic how they work but not actually how I made them. So if you want to see a video about that please leave a comment down in the comments below. So this is our rocket mass heater and you put wood in on the right and it evaporates and turns into heat and then that heat's collected by a water system that is taken to the heat store under the house. It's a steel construction mainly on the outside and then inside there is a fair refractory cement core similar to what you'd find inside a forge. So you feed wood into the top here and light it and then the flames and smoke and everything go sideways because of the amount of draw that these things create. And it also helps bypass a lot of the fire safety regs of the UK because they all rely on fires being front loading and all the fire regs are to prevent your house burning down as wood falls out of your fire. It's hard for wood to fall upwards. As I said earlier, you can see that the wood evaporates rather than burns. Um, you can see the boundary layer here, um, where the oxygen is meeting the gas coming out of the wood. And then further into the stove, you can see where the majority of the gas and oxygen mix, and that's where the burning occurs and release of energy, which then heats my house. Next time, however, I will find an easier way to put the refractory core into the steel stove. Uh, because rocket stoves have a really low exit temperature, they don't generate as much draw as is sometimes required on some chimneys, and therefore I've put this on top of ours, which increases the draw. So the rocket stove deals with heating in the winter, and the solar panel, which is this bit, uh, deals with heating in the summer. This is a solar thermal panel, which means it collects the sun's energy and heats water with it, rather than generating electricity. And it's far more efficient at heating water this way rather than generating electricity to heat water. Also Shadow wanted to say hello today. So the rocket stove and the solar panel are the two heat sources for the heating system and what we do is rather than generating it as we need it we generate it and store it. So we've got two water tanks one of which is a, a higher temperature water tank so it takes the water directly from the rocket stove and the solar panel and the other one, which is a lot bigger, takes the excess energy from that water tank and stores it in uh, water, which is our medium, because water's got such a high heat capacity. In a previous video, you saw me make a controller to transfer the excess heat from the small tank to the big tank, and you'll find a thing up in the corner somewhere if you want to watch that. So here's the storage tank with its lid off, and uh, I'm just going to run through a few construction pictures of it just to give you a quick overview of how it was made and how insulative it is. So the tank is a freestanding tank uh, and it's made with a 6x2 frame which has got fully filled with the polyurethane insulation and then there's another additional 50 millimeters on the inside of the tank so that brings up the total amount of insulation to 200 mil all round. The inside of the tank is then lined with OSB board and then has an EPDM uh, waterproof membrane put over the whole thing. So these coils of white pipe act as the heat exchangers within the storage tank. So if you have a day with this tank uh, with no heat input, uh, the sun's not out and you don't put the fire on, um, it only loses about one degree of temperature per day, which is lost under the house and so that temperature just um, comes up through the floor and into the house anyway, so it's not really lost, it's just um, not stored for as long as it could be. So that's how we get all the heat into the storage tanks and now we need to talk about how we get all the heat out of it. So the two things that we need to heat is the hot water for the house, so showers, kitchen taps, bathroom taps, 
and the other thing that we need to do is to heat the whole house which is done by the underfloor heating system and these are set up as you would expect to find in any other house so with today's prices for fuel and stuff like that I th think it costs about £80 a year to heat the house and that's just for the fuel that I need to use to go and get the firewood uh, if I was to buy the firewood separately it would be maybe 240 is about 80 pounds a cubic meter of firewood so still not too bad really if you have any questions please feel free to ask below um, I'm happy to answer all the questions for as long as I can and if you enjoyed this video please th consider subscribing and I will see you next time